there are times that measures of central tendency isn't enough to interpret data or compare. In a situation where two sets of data have same results of measures of central tendency, it somehow gives us idea to go further with other measures just to compare sets of data. Let's have these two sets of data. Two groups of five students with their scores into um, in with their scores. Looking at the data of the first group, the mean is 14, median is 14, and mode is also 14. For the second group, the mean is also 14, the median is also 14, and mode is also 14. Considering their measures of central tendency, they are used this to determine which of these two is better since they have the same measures of central tendency. This is where the next measure takes place. We have what we call measures of variation. Although these measures don't determine which is better, but, but this determine the consistency of how spread out the data set is. There are three measures of variation, range, variance, and standard deviation. Let's have the first. The range is the simplest measure of variability to calculate, and one you have probably encountered many times. The range is being identified by simply getting the difference of highest score minus the lowest score. The formula is written below, which is again, highest minus the lowest. The higher the range, the greater the dispersion of the data. I'm going to use example for you to understand further this statement. Let's consider the examples earlier of two group scores of the students. Having group 1, the highest is 18 and the lowest is 11. So using the formula, the range would be 18 minus 11, which is equal to 7. For the second group, the highest here is 19, and the lowest is 5. So it would be 19 minus 5 equals 14. In conclusion, group 1 is more consistent than the second group because the range here is lower than the second. Meaning to say, class, the scores of second group class is more are more spread out compared to the first group. But in terms of consistency of how spread out the data set is, range is not recommended because, as you can see, other data entries are being ignored because they just consider the lowest and highest data. So that's why it's not recommended just to get the range if you're after with the variability of the data. The second and third measures of variability are standard deviation and variance. The discussion for this two will be combined since the combination of one is just a continuation of the previous. Standard deviation is the most commonly used measure of variation. The standard deviation indicates how closely the values of a given data set are clustered around the mean. Standard deviation is the square root of variance. Now these are the formulae in getting the variance and ST of ungrouped data. In variance, we do have two, two formulae here. The variance for the sample size and the variance for the sample size. Now the difference of these two are their denominator. For sample size, the formula is sigma sigma of x minus the mean quantity squared all over n minus 1. Now for the population, the formula here is v is equal to sigma times the quantity of x minus mean quantity squared all over n, where n here is your population and sample size. Now for you to get again the standard deviation or SD, the formula is the square root of the variance. To use this formula, I am going to make use of the same given of the two groups um, scores and identify their variance and standard deviation. Well, in this case, since the given is just sample, 
So I'm going to use the formula for variance of sample size, which is sigma x minus a mean quantity squared all over n minus 1. So for us to use this formula, we'll need class the x minus the mean of each score. So using the give data of the two groups, we'll start first with the first group. One by one, you'll get the difference of this um, of each score by its mean. So we need to say, starting from 14 minus mean, which is 14, it will be 0. Next, 13 minus 14 is negative 1. 18 minus 14 is equal to 4. 14 minus 14 is equal to 0. Then 11 minus 14 is negative 3. Since the formula requires the quantity squared of the difference, we'll get first, we'll get the square of each result here. So from here, 0 squared is equal to 0. Negative 1 squared is 1. Then 4 squared is 16. 0 squared is 0. The negative 3 squared is positive 9. So with this, we can now use the formula. However, I am going to proceed with the second group and identify also their x minus mean quantity squared. Doing the same step, we'll have second group, one by one, get the difference of each score by its, um, the difference of each score and their mean. So 5 minus 14 is negative 9. 19 minus 14 is 5. 18 minus 14 is 4. Then 14 minus 14 is 0. 14 minus 14 is also zero get the square of this then we will have negative 9 squared is 81 5 squared is 25 4 squared is 16 and then 0 squared 0 squared is equal to 0 after getting the square of each difference class you have to get there the, the sum so adding the first group the sum of the third column it will be 0 plus 1, plus 16, plus 0, plus 9, it is equal to 26. So with this, express this again as sigma x minus the mean quantity squared. Now that we have the sigma x minus the mean quantity squared, we can now use the formula, which is sigma x minus mean quantity squared all over n minus 1. Substituting the given to the formula, it will be 26 all over 5 minus 1. Your n here is 5 since the given scores for each group is just 5, the sample size. So it will be 5 minus 1. So 26 divided by 4 will be 6.50. So get the square root of 6.50 for, for you to get the standard deviation, it is now 2.55. So that is now the standard deviation. Let's have the second group. The second group, get the sum of the third column, which is x minus the mean, and expressed as the sigma. This is 81 plus 25 plus 16. It is equal to 122. So your variance here will be, so you see the formula of the variance, substitute, it will be 122 all over 5 minus 1. Again, your sample size here is still 5. So 122 divided by 5 minus 1 is equal to 30.50. Get the square root of this for you to get the standard deviation that is approximately equal to 5.52. So that's now the standard deviation of this. So we can say here, since the first group has lesser standard deviation, than the second group, we can say that group 1 is more consistent than the second group because the standard deviation, again, is lower than the second. To illustrate how spread out the scores are using the standard deviation, we will use what we call the graph of dispersion. The examples of constructing graph of dispersion will be explained during your synchronous class. So I encourage you to attend in our synchronous class.